Gamers, I've pushed into the very end game of AFK Journey. I've been grinding this for a month straight over on my other AFK Journey King channel. I made an entire other channel for this game because I've been enjoying it quite a bit. And I wanted to give you my thoughts and tips. Uh, if you wanted to play this game and you wanted to progress and be the best on your server, what would I do? I want to recommend the best units for free-to-play players and newer players to the game. I want to talk about little tips and tricks that you can do. Let's get started. Tip number one, you want to do your AFK stages as soon as humanly possible because it increases the gains of experience and hero essence. But every five levels or so, they throw in a wall, a very tough fight that's harder than even some of the fights after it. You can do what is called a synergy battle once a day where you can bring in a unit from someone else. Go in the fight, lose the fight, and then bring in a synergy unit after the fact to push past that wall and keep progressing. You want to get this economy up as soon as possible, but there is one very interesting thing that none of us really knew about. Partway through the season, they will do, or or from the, you know, 30 days into the, the, the account creating, the server creating, they're going to do what's called the final push. It's where they double, actually, I think it's more than double all of your rewards. And so with the new season that's launching soon, Song of Strife, um, this is a really good way to max out your units. Just a few days ago, my units were level 200, and now they're like 220, some of them going on to 230. I've made insane progression in the last couple of days, but you want to make sure that you get those AFK stages up so you can benefit from the massive boost. Up next, I want to shout out some heroes that are extremely good for you to focus on and build long term. However, there's a few that really shine even with a low amount of copies. AKA, they get the majority of their value just existing and having one copy of them. So let me show those out now. Number one is Brutus. Brutus um, he can be used to cheese some floors for AFK stages or story missions because he can go invulnerable. So he's got a passive um, that after taking a final blow or, or he, he's immune to his first final blow and then he's unaffected for five seconds. This allows you to buy time for your other units to function and even if you have one copy, this works. You don't need him to survive beyond that. You just need him to tank a bunch of hits in the front line so your other units can get off their abilities. So Brutus is one of them. Another really good one is Coco. Coco is used to uh, provide damage mitigation for your team with her ultimate. This damage mitigation allows you to push content you realistically shouldn't, and she's used in most of the under-leveled comps that are in the game. Another really good example of a unit that thrives even with a few copies is on Tondra. Now, you're going to get copies of her for free um, just from doing some of the quests in-game. But she's an insanely good tank. She has damage mitigation, she's got a taunt, she can provide some shielding. She's a very good unit, and I pushed 95% of the AFK stages with an epic plus on Tundra. She could go to Legendary, Mythic, and Supreme, but I was still able to tank stuff with her. She's that good. So, uh, she's a very good unit without a lot of copies. Another one... If you get more copies, it's great, but one copy of Rowan can be a game changer because he provides energy to your team. One copy of Rowan can be a very nice pickup and can be uh, something that'll help you push content, would really highly recommend. And then other than that, like you definitely want dupes on a lot of different units, uh, but Kruger for PvE content, uh, his debuff from his ultimate and his passive, it allows your teammates to just do more damage to the boss, and so just throwing them on the field to do that ability can be pretty darn good. Really, really good. And then, I'll move on to a couple other kind of, you know, niche ones, and that's the Hypogen units and the Celestial units. And they're very rare, but if you end up getting one copy of Scarlita, this is an insanely good unit for pushing... Um, afk stages in the story because she she provides shields to your team so one copy you don't need a bunch of dupes of her can be really good and you can get her for free from an event in game um on top of that even just one copy of reiner is a game changer for pvp because he teleports units around the map so i would recommend people check out reiner uh and long term this is one of the best units to get because it's got he's got this insane debuff uh for bosses so um but even just one copy in the early game can be a game changer for some fights Everyone else, like, obviously you want multiple copies of everyone because it just makes them stronger and they start getting different passives. Uh, but don't sleep on the A-list heroes, and that's something that I want to talk about right now. 
So, the Dream Realm is this boss fighting game mode, and some of the best units are A-level heroes, the lower tier heroes, because you can buy multiple copies of them and get them up and running and doing insane damage. This chick with the little bow right here, she's insanely good. She's like the best DPS unit in the game. I'll show you her damage in a minute, and uh, I want to talk about a few units you should really focus on if you want to progress. I actually got a new record, and if you look here, woo, 11 million damage almost 12 million damage now you might notice this little dog guy here has almost 11 million that's good he's another a level hero that you're gonna want to build let's get started so the dream realm will give you currency and you can buy all of these different heroes i would highly recommend you get copies of Odie because Odie is going to be a, a god tier unit for all content pvp pve very very good now there was a while where i was thinking that Investing in her might be better because she's the best bossing damage dealer. But now that I'm in the end game and I'm doing content with very, very hard enemies, I think that Odie is the better investment um, until you max Odie out. Then switching to her. They're both good on the bosses, but he just works in more areas, so I'd highly recommend that. But then second best, I would say, is Merrily, and I would really work on that until the end game. And then there's this guy all the way down. Wait, where are you? Corin? where are you at? There you are. Corin. also a, a super good unit uh, for PvE bossing. Very, very good. And, uh, and this is kind of third priority. And then after that, you can fill the gaps. But you will get copies of everyone eventually, so I wouldn't stress out too much. But I do want to talk about the arena as well. After playing on multiple accounts, here's my recommendation for the arena shop. I think that maxing out Sishia first is the best even though sishia um people say she falls off in the end game she can also carry you to the end game you won't get to the end game if you don't have good units and she is very solid she can work in in multiple different areas i think that she's probably worth picking up at least to mythic plus that's who i would buy first and then i went for hewin because she's like a pretty crazy healer i can't click on her because i already sold this out um, and then other units that are really good, uh, Rowan is solid, but you don't need a ton of copies. Brutus, you only need one copy, so you could, if you just need them, you could buy them. And then this unit is very good for magic DPS units, and I think she'll gain value long term down the road. Um, but it does take some investment to get Cassidy uh, up and running. As for some of the other shops, always buy your daily ticket here, always buy your monthly stuff here. And then what you're going to do with your guild tokens is you're going to want to buy Reiner. And max him out as soon as you can because he's one of the best units in the game. Uh, and I will be buying another copy as soon as I can. The other thing I wanted to discuss is buying these title essence. In the very early game, it can give you an advantage. You use these to upgrade some of your character's skills uh, as well as upgrading your hero's kind of specialty weapon when you've got them to Mythic+. Plus. Now, this is a currency that you can get a bunch of for free from doing the Dream Realm. But the better you place in the Dream Realm, the more you get. So there is a situation where investing in them allows you to get more, but it also allows you to get the higher level one, and that's something that I really want to talk about. As you level up your characters and you get multiple copies, you can start upgrading these kind of legendary skills, and then eventually these Mythic Plus skills, all right? Once you're in Mythic Plus, you get a specialty item, and you can upgrade them. Now, the currency that you need starts becoming very scarce, and you need a lot of this to get characters up and running and get their bonuses. But not everyone is built the same. Some of these EX weapons and their legendary passives are way better than others. And so I want to give you a really good example of that. Um, I got this character up and running, but I didn't save enough of the currency, and so I couldn't level up her EX weapon. And now I'm missing some of the big upgrades for this weapon, and I could have got them sooner, and I, I wish I would have done it sooner because she is going to allow me to get more of this essence. So investing in her allows me to get more of this for my other characters, and, and I feel like that's something that I messed up and I should have done sooner. And so you want to be very careful here, and I want to give you a list of the characters that I highly recommend, you know, getting their EX weapons and investing in. So, again, free-to-play characters, Odie is super good in all content. I would recommend getting their weapon to plus 10 um, if, if you can. But if I if I look in retrospect, I think mar Merrily I, I would have done first for the kind of the, the economy. But this is really good for pushing content. You instantly kill poison enemies. You start the fight with energy so you can get those poisons out sooner. Very good unit. Highly recommend. 
I would say if you get Mythic plus on Thorin, I would take their weapon up to plus five because then uh, he protects the unit behind him. And then whatever damage that unit does, lifesteal for him. So this becomes like this immortal tank, insanely good for pushing content. Uh, I would recommend that character. Uh, Merrily, if you want to push the PvE content as well as Corrin, but you need to get them to Mythic Plus before you can even do that. But for the most part, anyone that has haste in their uh, legendary plus stuff is also a pretty good choice. Haste is a very strong skill for getting your ultimate out uh, sooner and doing your animations faster. Uh, so haste can be really good, but for the most part, I would focus on only one or two units and I would do the meta units that are that everyone is using like Odie and Merrily because they're just tried, tested, and true. And there are certain units that, you know, if you get Aaron, you know, you want to max him out for sure, but... He is more of like a PvP unit, and I would focus on the PvE stuff if I was going to do it all again. As for the arena, I would make sure to do my weekly rewards just because that's, you know, guaranteed currency. But you do want to spend some time here in the arena and uh, and and really kind of focus on on winning your fights and counterpicking and, and stuff as best you can. But there's first-time rewards that you can get for pushing up into the different ranks, but there's also daily and weekly rewards. So the higher rank you are, the faster you can start getting legendary uh, or S-rank heroes from the shop for free. So I would definitely, you know, commit some time to it. If you can somehow get into champion, which I should be able to do this week, there are some very big rewards that you can get um, kind of each week. So, you know, arena is important is definitely important, but I also do think it's one of those things that you'll get there in time. You can spend some gems uh, if you want to do extra fights. Uh, if you're going to, you know, ascend into the next rank, you get a kind of a first-time bonus. It can be worth it from time to time because 20, 30, 50 diamonds here and there, it's not the end of the world because you have to remember that doing more arena fights and getting a higher ranking arena means you're eventually going to get to trade it in with this currency for an s rank unit so it's kind of like doing a poll anyways you, you know what i mean it's like it's like you're investing in your economy for the future my next tip would be accepting that sometimes you're just not ready sometimes you don't have the units you need sometimes you're not high enough level when there's content like legend trial that gets harder and harder as you go some floors you just can't beat it and don't bang on it for 45 minutes you know what I mean? Sometimes you can squeak out some progression, and if you can get a really good reward for beating a level, maybe do it. But honestly, it's an AFK game, and a lot of the time, your progression is gated. There are so many floors where I just, as soon as I ascended someone, I was able to beat that floor, or I was able to beat that boss, or whatever it is. You won't get, you, you won't clear it after 45 minutes, you know, of, of just grinding the same thing uh, if you haven't actually progressed and leveled anyone up, in a lot of cases. There's these big level differentials, and it's it's hard to do it. And so um, being the best player in the world maybe will give you a little bit more progression. But if you are fighting something, you've done it four, five, six times, and it's it just seems impossible, it probably is. Just wait. Wait to the next day. Come back later uh, and do your thing. Okay? Does that make sense? So another really big thing to do is guilds. So there's guild chests depending on your... Um, you know, activeness and what you've done for the guild, you get these chests, and the chests can be very good for progression. Super important. You need to get into a guild as soon as possible. A tip is, if you start on a brand new server, the first guild or two is other sweaty players. If you jump into a guild that opened up, the only people that can make those guilds are sweaty people, you know? And the only people that can join that guild is someone who's sweaty, because they're the first people who are even allowed, because it's based on your progression. So if you make a new account, you jump in, and all of a sudden a clan pops up, that person is either a whale or sweatier than you are, and so if you can join them, it, it typically leads to a good clan. I just randomly joined this one at the beginning of the server, and we ended up being the second highest ranked clan in the whole server. Like, our clan is cracked. Uh, and it just, I just randomly joined it. They didn't know who I was, I didn't know who they were, it was just, just luck, so... Another thing is with guilds, depending on your rank, you actually get some pretty juicy rewards. Now, this is probably an anomaly because we're top three, but we're getting a ton of currency to buy these Hypogen and Celestial units, some of the best units in the game. And so 
Um, a guild can be insanely good for that, but even like the top 20, top 60, top 200, it is still a very big amount of these medals to progress your account long term. So highly recommend that you jump in uh, and you get into a guild as soon as you can. There's also these battle drills, and battle drills have their own loot. They've got these different chests and reputation quests, and you just, you want to do this. So don't slack on a guild. As for pulling and wish list, this stuff is going to evolve over time depending on who you have. If you look at my wish list right now, you'd be like, that looks a little weird, and it's because I've already maxed out a few characters. Normally, you'd want to have in someone like this, and, and you'd want to have someone, you know, maybe like Rowan in here, or whatever it is. Watch a few guides on wish lists, but I'll really quickly show you kind of what I would do. Um, I would go like this. Eh, that one's fine. This one, I would go like this, personally. And this is fine. This is fine. This is all fine. So this is this is personally what I would do. Um, wait, that didn't switch. My bad. This is what I would do. And let me explain it really fast. So, until I got a copy of Rowan, I would keep him in here. Personally, I like him, so I would always keep this. But Vala is really good for PvP and some PvE bosses, uh, world bosses. So this is what I would personally do. And then after I got a copy of Rowan, I might swap out for Tamisia, who can be pretty good for some fights, or uh, Cassidy. Uh, but yeah, I'd probably do that. And then the A-level heroes, until they're both maxed, keep them in here. There's no one else really worth getting in here overall. I would just keep them in here forever. As for the Maulers, I would get a copy of Brutus, minimum, and then I'd probably put in this guy because he could be a really interesting DPS unit for certain bosses. Uh, and then leave Smokey in there until maxed, Odie until maxed, Coco most likely until Mythic Plus or maxed. Um, you'll get some of these other units, but um, Kruger, if you just need one copy, you could throw him in there for a second, but I would probably just stick with this. As for the Wilder, you can either do Hewen, who I have maxed, and that's who I chose first, and I kept her in there until maxed, uh, and then I'll, I'm going to, you know, do do her. But you always want to keep this guy in here because he's super good long term. Damien is a really good healer, and you can put him in here, or you can put Arden in here. You could also argue uh, Parissa. She has some potential tech um, overall. And then for me, some people are going to dis disagree on this because they say that Carolina is is more meta long term and end game but i would get sishia to mythic plus and i would leave her in here and i would try to get as many copies as i can i know you can buy her from the arena shop but you can only get two copies a month so i would try to get her up and running and functioning at mythic plus and then maybe i would swap that out thorin until he is maxed thorin is an absolute god and then these units, they don't matter that much. We need some more Greyborn units. So that's what I would do for my wish list if I wanted to progress. As for the epic recruitment, you you can make so many arguments like put Brutus in here till you get a copy, Rowan in here till you get a copy. You know, there's different things. But the things that I would definitely recommend is units you can't buy out of the arena shop. So I know that I can get multiple copies of her. It probably makes more sense to have her in there instead. I can't buy Vala. I can't buy him. I can't buy any of these units. And they're all pretty meta. So I want all of these units personally in there to get as many copies of them as I can long term. Eventually, you will unlock all the artifacts. But in most bossing and even in the arena, Star Shard spell can be really good. Uh, as soon as you start getting ultimates off, the other opponents they they lose their attack speed uh it does some damage to them star shard spell is very good in a lot of situations but in pve content it's very very good in my opinion one of the best another really good one is confining spell because it locks down the back line i would highly recommend once you get this to use it and then there is niche situations where iron wall will help keep you know a tank in the front line alive but it's not that amazing it's pretty good but essentially if you're gonna die you're gonna die like, it, it's really hard to tank uh, certain fights in this game. Uh, but the attack speed uh, getting reduced from Star Shard, this is my favorite artifact by far. So that's the one I recommend people invest in and use in most situations. And as for gear, you will get gear over time from chests and things like that. Um, and if you're not using a particular type of character, I don't use a lot of mages, I personally don't buy and forge all their stuff right away. I focus on the characters that I actually use more often, make sure that their gear is up to snuff as a priority, and then you can go into the other ones if there's a gap or there's an issue and try to max that out and, and fix that. There's multiple shops in the game that you can do that in, but just, you know, you don't want to spend all your money on this stuff, uh, on characters that you're not even going to be using, because you can go craft a piece, and then 
the next day just get a drop that upgrades it again you know what i mean so it's kind of pointless to craft it but yeah those are my overall thoughts um i would jump in if you're if you're looking for a new game i've been enjoying afk journey a lot on my other channel afk journey king and uh, they've got a new season that's coming. They're going to do this whole new season where um, it's got like some separate levels. Like all of your progression stays essentially, but there's a new area, new bosses, new things to do. Um, and you kind of progress that as well. But you need to get into the end game. So you want to start now uh, and you want to play now. Use that link down below. Get started today. Uh, about 30 days into the server, you'll get this catch up mechanic, this boost. You will get to the end game sooner than you think. Uh, and then you can enjoy the new season and the new stuff. And there's like a bunch of stuff. They're adding like kind of like set gear. Different heroes have different specialized skills in the season, which is like, you know, some unit that never gets used might be a god in the new season, which is kind of cool. Um, there's, yeah, different classes, different artifacts. There's so much going on. Haven't got to play it yet myself or test it out really, but yeah, I'm excited for it. I'm going to check it out and uh, I'm going to be keeping making content over on that other channel. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Click that link down below, and thank you so much for sponsoring the channel.